Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. Today I've got a CZ Scorpion EVO 3, the S1 model, which is a pistol, sitting here on the table. Please don't forget to check out our website. Go to our affiliates page. You'll find discount codes for things like Mantis Axe and Core Belts. You'll find a link that you can sign up for Big Daddy Unlimited. They actually have things in stock and usually at a lower price than other places. Link to that cool little bore light that we use for lighting up the barrels. Use those links, it will often save you money never will cost you any additional money and helps the channel. Thank you. Chambered in 9mm, it's actually quite an interesting gun. I'll pull out the uh, magazine. We do have an unloaded Scorpion. No sting in the Scorpion. So it's quite an interesting gun. This one is a pistol configuration. This Evo is available in a number of configurations including a carbine and a uh, pistol with a brace right from the factory. The way you see this one here is exactly the way it came out of the box. Nothing's been changed on it. But like a Glock, there's a large aftermarket support for these. So pretty much anything you see on it that you don't like, you can change. But this one is just complete straight stock factory configuration. It's not a small gun by any stretch of the imagination. It's kind of a pistol legally, but kind of physically it's almost like a short rifle. It's 16 inches long and 9.4 inches to top to bottom, you know, height, and it weighs 5 pounds. So there's nothing small about this. However, it is actually a well-designed gun. It's quite ergonomic with a couple exceptions that I'll talk about as, as I go through it, and it works well. You see the flash hider at the front. Starting at around 2016 going forward, this sits on top of a half by 28 threads. So you could remove this and put a can on it or another muzzle device, whatever it was that you wanted. These Picatinny rails that are in the underneath of it, here on the side, on both sides, and a full 11 inch rail on the top can be used to add whatever accessory you want. The sights that you see on here are actually attached via the Picatinny rail. So you could remove these, but these are the sights that come with it from the factory. You can remove it, put a red dot, a scope, whatever it is that's, that thrills you on here. And I'm going to show you the sights. It's going to take a second to get the camera to line up. So you've got a, a ring at the back and then a post at the front. Kind of a very common rifle style sight. For my eyes, these are a little difficult to use. The post has a tendency to gray out on me no matter what I want to do, so it's hard to find the tip of it. If I were going to keep these sights as they sit, I would probably probably put a, see if I can get it to focus on it, I'd probably try to put a white dot or something on the end and see if I can get it to line up. Physically, this thing is actually capable and quite accurate. I had a little hard time putting the group where I wanted, but I was actually able to pull tight groups with it. And that's not because of any deficiency in the gun, it's just difficulty seeing the sights. They're robust, solid, adjustable sights. You can see the adjusters here. So they're fully adjustable. They're actually quite nice sights and if I could see them well, I'd actually like them. But, because I can remove these and put something else on, the sky's the limit in what you might want to do. The charging handle is non-reciprocating, and it's reversible, and it can actually be used to lock it back, which let me turn it around, which is actually even part of the disassembly. You can pull it back and push it up, and that kind of hard locks the bolt back. You can also use the slide stop slide release, unless you're disassembling it, to lock it back. But this is kind of a hard stop, kind of like the Tavor and a couple of other guns that have that kind of a feature. When it's locked back like that, it's not going forward. It does have full ambi controls, with the exception of the slide stop slide release. So the safety is ambi, it's on both sides. Actually, it's a little bit different than what you're used to for like an AR. And the magazine release you saw me use is right here, and you just push it forward. And that is also ambi. You can push it forward from either side, and it works well. Once you understand it, you're used to it, it works well. The grip couldn't be replaced, but it's actually quite a nice grip. It's got a little serration on the front and rear. It's comfortable to hold. It's easy to get a hold of. 
and whether you've got a large hand or a small hand, it's kind of easy to work with. The magazines that come with this one are 20 round, no window. Came with two of these. So basically it's the, the cheapest setup of mags that you can get, but it comes with these. You can also get a 30 round, you can get them with windows, and you can get the more classic clear ones where the magazine body is actually clear. You see spring rounds and all. The, a lot of people were worried that the clear ones weren't as durable as the darker colored ones. So, you know, whichever it is that you float your boat, it's available to you. Magazines insert easily into a flared magwell and pop out just as easily. And they pop out well even when the bolt's back. And, oh, by the way, this is available in a 10 round only version for those who are unfortunate enough to live in a less free location. You can get this in a 10 round version. This gun is an MSRP of about 1100 and what I find with CZs is they go in spurts of availability. So at times I've looked for one of these and they haven't been available. Other times they've been all over the place and I had some other priorities so I didn't buy one. It's been on my list for a while. Right now, as of the making of this video, these things are everywhere and they're actually selling below MSRP, which is kind of unusual right now in current times with guns. They tend to be selling high. You can actually get these under MSRP. But it's about $100 more than last time I saw them widely available. So it kind of goes in cycles. But depending on when you're looking, you actually can get a pretty good deal on these. It's easy to use. You grip it at the grip, you grip it at the forward, you can go even further forward. But you got to be careful. You see if I go all the way forward, look where my thumb is. It's close to the plasma blast that's going to come out of the muzzle brake or the flesh hider. But this does prevent you from accidentally doing this and getting your hand out in front of the barrel. However, I tend to recommend holding it a little further back, maybe putting your palm up against this curve right here so that you're away from that muzzle flash entirely. Now, I, when I took this to the range to get range footage, I had a couple friends with me, a, a male and a female, and both of them have smaller hands than mine, and she has significantly smaller hands. She did not have a problem that both Hammer and I have which is when you're using it, having this ambi safety bite into you, especially when it's in fire mode because it comes further down. When I have a hold of it, that is biting right into me. You can see it's pressing right into me. As your hand gets smaller, that's less of a problem. Good news is the aftermarket has a number of solutions to fix that, whether you're left-handed or right-handed, of making the opposite safety, the one that would bite into your hand, kind of go away. But as it comes out of the box, it is nice that it has an ambi safety, but it's not so nice in that it's probably going to bite into your hand unless you've got a small hand. The only other thing that we ran into is her hands are not as calloused up and beaten up from working on engines as mine. They're softer, of course, and these rails kind of dug into her. So grabbing the Picatinny rails, even though they're polymer, was a bit unpleasant. Depending on what you're doing, you may want to put, you know, there's a number of covers available to put over the rails to kind of make them not edgy. So if you're going to grip this and you're not going to have a flashlight or an optic or something up here that's in the way, then you can cover them up if they do bother your hands. The one on the top, of course, is up there and it's kind of out of the way, but it's well suited for a red dot, a, a long eye relief scope, keeping in mind this particular one is designed to be used as a pistol, a long eye relief scope or whatever it is that you want, or maybe flip up sights that, are, that more suit your desire for how you want to be able to, to use it, but it's all available. You can get aftermarket braces for this, but remember, this is a pistol, so don't put a stock on it. You don't want to create a short barrel rifle un unintentionally, because whether it's unintentional or not, the consequences are pretty severe. And there are hooks here for doing any kind of a strap that you might want to put on it, and they're on both sides. It's easy to maintain. I'll show that a little bit later. It looks like I got a little bit exuberant with the oil. These are actually easy to maintain. They're easy to live with. And, you know, other than things like the safety or if your hands are a little softer, the Picatinny rail biting into you, they're actually comfortable and easy to use as any of these pistol rifle variants are. I mean, basically, this is something that was designed as a rifle and became a pistol, or at least the overall body of it is. So you're holding it kind of in both hands out in front of you, which is a little less ergonomic than a true pistol, you know, a Glock or a Smith & Wesson. But... You got the longer barrel, you've got a 7.72 inch barrel, so you're going to get a little bit more stabilization and a little bit more velocity. And these do make good home defense weapons and things like that. Of course, they're less useful for concealed carry just due to the size of them and the cumbersomeness of them. 
One thing I meant, didn't mention earlier is that this charging handle, which is non-reciprocating, I did mention that, but it's also reversible. It can be flipped over, put on the other side, so that depending on which hand you're going to operate with, it's easy to configure this thing to suit your needs. You can replace this with something different if you want to. You just got to be careful with putting anything like a forward grip on it because it's a pistol, you know, the ATF regulations, but you can put one of those angle grips on it. They're a little bit smoother, whatever you want to do with it. I'm going to talk about the trigger briefly. So, of course, it's still unloaded. It didn't load itself while I was holding onto it. It's a combat trigger. It's about nine pounds. It's got a serrated front. It's curved. It's comfortable to use. Oops, take it off safe. It'll actually work a little better, won't it? A little bit of take up, kind of a vague break. There's no real defined wall, but it's relatively short. There's the reset, very, very audible reset and tactile, you feel it. A little bit of take up to get back on what little wall there is and then the break. And the whole thing's roughly in the nine pound range. It's actually a decent trigger, but it is kind of a battle trigger. Again, like everything else on this gun, that can be changed if you see fit, but this is the stock figure triggered exactly the way it comes out of the box. Now maintaining it is actually pretty easy. So you lock it, lock the bolt back, not with the slight step release, but with this arm, the charging handle. And then right here, there's a pin, and you can actually just push it with your finger. And when you do that, it pops out the other side. And you grab a hold of it and pull it all the way out. Best thing to do is make sure that the fire control is set to safe, so that you don't actually pull the trigger while you're working with it. And then you just grab the fire control group and pull it out. Now, you can clean this, do whatever maintenance you need to do on it. There's really no functional parts other than the fire control itself. There's no rails or anything that slides on here. You just have the trigger assembly, or the trigger and the hammer assembly and the springs. You set that aside. Then there's a number of ways to get the bolt out. But the what I found the easiest way to do it is to grab a hold of it, release this, and so I slid this down. And as you pull it forward, pull it up, and out it comes. It's got a rather large, heavy, bulky, kind of block-style bolt. This is a blowback gun, so there's no gas system in it. Nice thing about having no gas system is it's fairly easy to clean and maintain. You don't have the gas tubes and all sorts of pressure going on all over the place. I don't know of anybody, any indication that these are ammo-sensitive. It works with anything I fed it. Blowback can be a little bit ammo-sensitive, but I haven't really heard any reports of these things being picky about what they eat. So I'm not, I wouldn't say that the blowback on this is any kind of a problem. When you look at the inside, you've got the kind of like somewhat guides in here. There's not true rails in here because you've got that big metal block. And then if I show you the feed ramp is pretty robust. It's semi-polished. It's kind of hard to get in there and look at it. And you can see that all the way around the chamber is kind of also like a mini feed ramp. So it's designed to, whichever way the round is kind of laying, to guide it right in. And the barrel is well machined. Let's go ahead and get my light in here. It's got conventional rifling, and it's, it's well machined. Everything on this is well done. It's, it seems to be well designed, well thought through, well machined throughout the entirety of it. And it's actually a really good whether it's for a fun time for you personally or for combat, which of course is what these were originally designed for, there is actually a full auto version of these, but you can't get them in a civilian world in the United States because they were manufactured after 1985, so you can't even get them under the NFA. Putting the bolt back in is as simple as putting it back in, pulling it back enough to clear, and you can use the, the uh, charging handle to catch it so that it doesn't pinch your hand and just drive it home. At this point, the bolt's installed. I grab the charging handle. You can see the bolt cycling back and forth. All I need to do is put the fire control group back in, which is as easy as lining it up, which is easier to do when I'm actually looking at it. All I had to do is I had to line the back of the trigger guard up with a notch in the grip. Now, one thing I failed to do that you do need to do is lock the bolt back with the charging handle before you try to put this in place, and then it just kind of drops down in. Push this pin through till it latches and release the bolt and you're back in business. One thing you will notice on this is when the hammer has been dropped and you go to charge it, 
there's a spot right about here where it almost feels like it's hanging up or something. It's not. It's just that initial pulling back of the spring is really heavy. After that, it's smooth. When I first got it, I was wondering if something was hung up. I didn't want to put extra force on it, but that's just the way it works. So after it's been fired, if you manually charge it, you're going to find there is a spot where it's a little bit of work to pull it. But you just grab it, pull it back, and it, it'll cycle fine. From an overall impression standpoint, the thing is cool. It's actually fun to shoot. It kind of draws attention. It's unique. Is, is it particularly practical? It's not particularly practical. As a home defense gun, it would definitely be functional, especially if you outfitted it with a red dot and other things to make target acquisition quicker. But it is still 9mm, so the question might be from that perspective is, is it any more functional than a full-size M&P or a Glock or a PPQ? Probably not. It's more of just a fun gun. It's entertaining to take to the range. And of course it will work for things like home defense, but it may not be the most practical thing for that. Beyond that, if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, click that bell up there to be notified if you do. Check us out on Facebook, Patreon, Instagram, Twitter, kind of everywhere. Thank you. Thank you.